Here's the big challenge of life. You can have more than you've got because you can become more than you are. That's the challenge. And of course, the other side of the coin reads, unless you change how you are, you'll always have what you got. Everybody hopes things will get better. Everybody hopes. Poor people hope. That ought to tell you something. It means the future does not get better by hope. It gets better by plan. If you wish to be successful, study success. If you wish to be happy, study happiness. If you wish to be wealthy, study wealth. Don't leave it to chance. Make it a study. Some people just go through the day with their fingers crossed. See, that won't do it. You've got to study the things that can change your economic, social, spiritual, personal life. If you don't like how it is for you, change it. If it doesn't suit you, change it. If it doesn't please you, change it. If it isn't enough, change it. And I challenge you to do that because you can change. See, you don't ever have to be the same again after tonight, only by choice. See, you don't want to wind up at the end of your life and discover that you've lived only one-tenth of it. And the other nine-tenths went down the drain. Not for lack of opportunity, for lack of information. Most of us lower our standards, why? Because who you spend time with, my friends, is who you become. Quality of your life is the quality of where you live emotionally. Like we all have a home. Angry people time, find a way to get angry, even if their life doesn't have anything to be angry about. We can always find it. Sad people find a way to be sad. Caring people find a way to care for other people. So one thing you've got to identify is where are you living? What's your home? What's your habit? And then the way to change it is that when I was homeless, literally on my own, just getting started, I didn't have the internet, but I decided I had to go to a library and I had to feed my mind. And I always tell people the first stage is, you know, weeds grow automatically. Uh, one of my teachers taught me, he said, every day stand guard at the door of your mind and feed it something good. Because if your worst enemy puts sugar in your coffee here, you're fine. If your best friend by accident trying to help you put some strychnine, you're dead. So if you feed your mind every day, 30 minutes a day of reading something, hearing something, second, you got to strengthen your body. And the reason, Pierce, is fear is physical, right? So is stagnation, so is numbness, so is sadness, so is rage. And when you go in and change your body by an intense workout or a run or even an intense walk and the blood's flowing through you, science has shown it instantly changes your biochemistry. And now your mind and body are working together. Third thing, all these people did in common, if you watch, they found a mission bigger than themselves. Yeah. Something that they wanted to aspire to that was worth more than their pain. And then the fourth thing is, you gotta find a role model. You know, you heard it with Nick. Um, almost everybody finds a role model that makes it real. Yeah. When you get a role model, it becomes real to you if you get a plan, you get a goal plan, and you take massive action. And the last step, number five, there's always somebody all worse off than you are, I don't care what you've done. So if you can go help somebody worse off, it puts your life in perspective, and it also reminds you life's not about me, it's about we. I always tell people, the secret to a great life, the secret to living, is giving. And there's, when you realize there's something in you still to give, even if you lost your legs, even if you've been through a horrific financial situation, your life can improve, but more importantly, you'll have a meaningful life because your life will contribute to other people. Decide to develop the habit right now, the habit of focusing on what's right in your world instead of what's wrong. The habit of focusing on what you do have instead of what you don't have in a situation. And as basic as that is, and as well as you know it, you've got to make it a habit. Because those habits form the chain of your ultimate character, of who you become and how you end up living your life. We've got to condition ourselves, because if we don't, we'll go back to the automatic state that most people live in in today's society. The way to develop the habit is to go on a mental diet. It's that you immediately do not allow yourself to hold a negative feeling, a negative thought for seven straight days, day and night, even when it gets tough, even when somebody disappoints you, even when you get frustrated, even when you give your all and it still turns up lousy. Listen, if all I did was rant and rave on this tape and you didn't listen to anything else I said, but you took on this seven day challenge, you can't believe what it'll do to your life. If you get yourself in a state of certainty that this is gonna work, I'm gonna find the way, and if this doesn't work, I will make the way then you tap a lot more potential. And when you're certain in your potential, you take massive action. When you take massive action, you really believe in something, you get great results. When you get great results, your brain goes, see, I told you I was a stud. People tell me all the time, oh, I'm skeptical or I'm pessimistic. I said, no, 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 you're gutless. It takes no guts, it takes no courage 
to be a pessimist, to say it's not going to work, to try to find out what's wrong. What's wrong is always available. So is what's right. So I'm not into positive thinking, but I am into intelligence. And intelligence says, see it as it is, don't make it worse than it is. The only way it gets better is if you can see how it is. Don't make it worse than it is. Don't try to make it so it's impossible to change. That's not true. It's not true at all. The second mandate, I think, to changing anything in your life, to believing your life, is once you see it as it is, not worse than it is, then you gotta see it better than it is. Because that's the thing that's missing from most relationships. There's no vision. I mean, without a vision, people what? Perish. And when a relationship has no vision for greater than where they are, that relationship is going downhill, if not destroyed. I believe that every relationship, every part of life, every part of a human being needs a compelling future. If the future's not more compelling than today, today could be tough, but if the future's compelling, we can get there. I'm saying this is a time more than ever that you want to begin to inoculate yourself with positive words, coming to conventions, showing up on meetings, being on the calls to make yourself unstoppable, to get out of your mind the polluting negative thoughts that's causing most people to go through life being stuck because they're volunteer victims. Somebody said that many people die at age 25 and don't get buried until they're 65 because they got so much garbage in their minds. You are here because you've got a clear vision of what you want and where you're going. Give yourselves a round of applause. Come on, bring energy level up. Yes, yes. You want more. You want more. You're different. You're different than everybody else. Don't worry if they don't get it. Don't try and convince people to do this business. A person convinced against their will is of the same opinion still. You are not like everybody else. You can walk outside and find pigeons, but if you're looking for eagles, it's going to take you a minute. You are different. It's lonely at the top. How many of you know it's lonely at the top? Raise your hands. It's lonely at the top, but you eat better. That's what I'm talking about. You're different. One great entrepreneur said, I choose not to be a common man. It's my right to be uncommon if I can. I seek opportunity, not security. I do not wish to be a kept citizen, humbled and dull by having the state look after me. I want to take the calculated risk to dream and to build, to fail and to succeed. I refuse to live from hand to mouth. I prefer the challenges of life to the guaranteed existence, the thrill of fulfillment to the still calm of utopia. I will never cower before any master, nor bend to any threat. It's my heritage to stand erect, proud and unafraid, to face the world boldly and say, this I have done, you showed up, because you're building a business that you can stand and say, I did this. I did this. This is my dream. Give yourselves a round of applause. Yes. Yes.